how do you view the skirmish and what does it mean? Well, here's how I look at it, Paul. Let's, let's first understand the context in which the comments were made by Nick Saban last night. To my understanding, he was talking to a group of donors, boosters, trying to inform them of the lay of the land. And he basically said, hey, listen, guys, uh, we're going to have to raise more money. We're going to have to ask for more money because of X, Y, Z. And then he went on to state that, hey, A&M just bought their entire recruiting class because of NIL. You have Jackson State that's given money upwards of a million dollars to recruit, and this is the new landscape. So if you guys want Alabama to compete on that landscape, we're going to need to raise money. So that's the context in which I understand those comments were made. And, Paul, to be honest with you, I don't see anything wrong with what he said. And here's what I mean. We all know that NIL is now legal, okay? You you can do it. Now, you can't uh, buy a recruit per se, but we all know what you mean. You can get the collective to 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 pledge uh, X amount of dollars to the recruit if and when he does sign. You don't have to sign, but if and when you do sign, here's what you're going to get, X, Y, Z. So technically, uh, you are buying the recruits to come to your school. So once we get past all the red tape, that's basically what's going on. So if you understand what's happening now in college athletics, what Nick Saban said was true. I honestly think, though, that Jimbo Fisher and A&M – uh, their ego is getting in the way a little bit. And here's what I mean by that. They didn't do anything wrong. They played above the rules and the rules in which they were given, which were name, image, and likeness, and they have every right to raise as much money through the collective or whatever they're using as they can. But I think what happens is because the almighty Nick Saban has won seven national championships and he's uh, largely been, been lauded as the greatest recruiter ever, when he says A&M bought the players, the people at A&M, including Jimbo, are basically taking, taking it as if Nick is saying we can't do it uh, the old way. We can't rec- just out-recruit Alabama. We have to buy our players. And I don't know if I'd take it that way if I were Jimbo. What I would say is, hey, we did everything the right way. We played by the rules, and we got maybe the best recruiting class ever. I just think what happens with these college coaches, Paul, and these recruits and these fan bases, ego gets in the way. And I'm really not sure what we're arguing about today. Jimbo used name, image, and likeness, just like every other school, to sign a recruiting class. Nick Saban just called it out. I'm not really sure why we're arguing over the fact other than it's about ego. Speaking of ego, and I'm not sure exactly how, how you know, the best way psychologically to, to move from that to what Jimbo said, but Jimbo called Nick Saban a narcissist. I, I've, heard, I've heard college coaches call each other a lot of things. That's a new one, though. Uh, and you know, he went on and on and on about uh, just ask any uh, former Saban assistant. He kept walking up to the line and backing off as if, as if working for Nick Saban is the worst thing in the world, where on one hand, maybe it is, but it's also a, a ticket to, to stardom for many other coaches. You know that just based on college coaches and people in the NFL. So how do you square that part of this equation where a lot of dirty laundry was aired by Jimbo Fisher about Nick Saban today? I think sometimes, Paul, we get emotional, and usually men don't get emotional, okay? Uh, Usually that doesn't happen to us. But I think today Jimbo got emotional, and he said some things that if you ask him six months from now, he probably wish he wouldn't have said. But nevertheless, the two faces out of the tube, and he basically, if you sum it up, he said Nick Saban is butthurt, Nick Saban is a narcissist. He's won a bunch of games, and things have gone his way. And when things don't go, don't go his way, he cries a river. Well, okay, uh, but, but but you can't doubt, or or you, or you can't really look at what Nick Saban has done and the and the success that he's had, and just because he calls you to the carpet, say that all of a sudden he is a, a narcissist. Whatever he's done, it's been successful. So if you want to call him a narcissist, more coaches in the country need to be narcissists then because he's the greatest college football coach of all time. So I'm not going to allow what Nick Saban said last night to a bunch of donors and, 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 and boosters to allow me to in any way, shape, or form to tarnish what he's built on the field. I just think if you're Jimbo, here's what you got to look at. Jimbo has got maybe the greatest recruiting class ever. And right now, he's done nothing with it. If I were... Ross Bjork, if I were Jimbo Fisher and I were every A&M person out there, Billy Lucci, who's coming on the program next and all, if I were any A&M person, here's what I'd say. I'd shut up, I'd be quiet, and I'd go prove it on the field. Because Paul Quietus has kept, A&M hasn't proved anything on the field yet. They haven't, they haven't proved not one thing on the field. They proved they can build tall buildings. They proved they can build 
a uh, great recruiting class, but have they proved proven they can win 11 wins and win the SEC? Have they proven they can get to the SEC championship and go play for a national chip? They have not proven that. So if I were A&M and I were the people in College Station, I would worry about that and stop worrying about what the greatest college football coach of all time says because you're not going to win – social media with Nick Saban. You're not going to win the war of public opinion with the greatest coach of all time because he's got pellets on the wall. He's got something that you don't have. And so the only way you're going to win this fight or win this this this, this, this squabble, go beat him. And, yeah, you beat him last year, but what did A&M go last year? You beat Nick Saban, but you lost to how many other games? You lost to an LSU team that was bad last year? Like, like Jimbo's got to prove not only can he beat Alabama, but he can go on and put a lot of wins together and get A&M where they should be. Because, Paul, to be honest with you, they have a recruiting class the last couple of years that, sh- that says they should be competing for a national championship this year and or next year. And if that doesn't get done, then if I'm Jimbo, I'm worried more about that than I am than what Nick Saban said about me as some booster or donor event. Because to me, that's the biggest issue. It's not what Nick Saban said last night. is when you come to September and the Saturdays, Saturdays in September – can you do it and you do it consistently? Because one thing we know, Paul, they haven't done it yet so far. Nick Saban has done it. He's been there. He's done that regardless of how you say he did it, regardless of what he did to do it. He's won seven, on the, seven national championships, a bunch of different ways at a couple of different schools. Jimbo Fisher, A&M has more money than God. We know that based on the recruiting class that they just got, according to Nick Saban. Now, can they do it on the field? I think that's what I would worry about more than what someone says about me in May. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.